Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. I am really excited to bring you today's video because I am talking about a TBR today. Now, if you watch my channel, you probably know that TBRs are sometimes a little bit of a struggle bus for me. I'm not always great at following them, but I am so excited because I'm going to take part in May in the Asian Readathon. And I decided to go ahead and do a TBR video for this because as I was thinking through, well, you know what, let me just tell you the full tea about the Readathon and then I'll tell you why I'm excited about it. Also, it looks like I have a black eye. I promise I don't. It's just like the lighting is weird because of the time of day. I, I promise I have blended everything and I'm also not like getting into fisticuffs with people at bars or anything to give me a black eye. It's just the lighting. You don't care about any of that. Anyway, let me tell you about the readathon. Let me tell you about the challenges and then let me tell you about what I'm reading for it. So the Asian Readathon is going to be taking place in the month of May and that is to celebrate, I believe, Asian and Pacific Islander History Month. I could be wrong about that, but it seems to be, I think May is the equivalent of Black History Month in February. That is May for Asian and Pacific Islanders. And uh, Read with Cindy, which is a fantastic channel run by a fantastic lady named Cindy, decided to do a read along to celebrate that. I absolutely adore Read with Cindy. I know all of you do, like my best friend here in Nashville, like she is okay on my videos, but she loves Cindy. <laughs> She's like, have you seen the new Cindy video? I'm like, okay, what, whatever. I'm just chop liver. I see how it is. But Cindy's great. She's also the reason why anytime somebody says Sarah J. Mass, the, I think Sarah J. Mass up my Sarah J. Ass. Shout out to Cindy for that little catchphrase. But anyway, she's fantastic. You should definitely check her channel out. And she's the organizer of this readathon and is to read books by Asian authors featuring Asian characters and a couple of different combos of that. And also to read kind of like the breadth of what Asian literature has to offer because it's not just one country like Asia is, I mean, it's the world's biggest continent. It's a big ass continent full of lots of different cultures and lots of different people. So I think really the spirit of this is to try to celebrate like the fullness of what the Asian continent has to offer to us in literature. And I got so excited about this. So let me tell you about the challenges that are specifically involved in this. So number one is to read any book by an Asian author. Number two is to read a graphic novel featuring an Asian character or written or drawn by an Asian author. And that can be in whatever form it comes in, like manga or menwa or whatever comic version uh, a particular Asian country has on offer um, to do that. The third challenge is to read a book featuring an intersectional Asian character or written by an intersectional Asian author. And so this is essentially trying to encourage people to not to just think about Asian as the only identity that Asian people have. So like uh, LGBTQ plus Asians or differently abled Asians or biracial Asians or first gen immigrant Asian, like just the full totality of intersectional identities. So that that's the third challenge. The fourth challenge is to read a book by an Asian author that was originally written in their native language and it could either be translated or not. So this is just, you know, to make sure that we're not just covering originally English language Asian authors, but a spectrum. And finally, the fifth challenge is to read the group book, which I believe is A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, which was edited by Ellen O. And that is going to be in like a, a live show on I think the 25th of May. Yeah, so if you read that book, you can join Cindy and a few different co hosts as they discuss that book. And then the like additional challenge you can undertake is to try to complete all of these challenges but with each Asian representation coming from a different ethnicity or a different country. So for instance, maybe trying to read um, a book by a Korean author, a book featuring an Indian character, a book with a queer Japanese character, like just trying to mix it up and not just have everything come from one country. So those are the specific challenges and kind of the overall goal of the readathon. Uh, I will link Cindy's announcement video and in her description, she has a link to a Google Doc that has a lot more information in it and a lot of suggested like book picks for the readathon. So I will link to that um, as well as her channel. So that way you can get the full tea because I'm sure I'm missing something. But all of that to say, in 
watching her announcement video and getting very excited, I decided that I wanted to do kind of a version of this because, so I, I know off the bat that I probably will not be completing all of these challenges unless just something really changes. Because what this really inspired me to think about was the fact that on my existing TBR, I have a ton of books that I've been really wanting to get to that are either by Asian authors or featuring Asian characters. So this year, because I assume that I'll probably try to do this again next year, this year I really just want to focus on books that were already on my TBR that fit one of those two criteria because I want to show myself or remind myself that I like just when I'm out and about in the wild buying books or like putting books on my TBR, there's a lot of books by Asians or featuring Asians that I am into. And so I want to kind of celebrate that this year and not get too prescriptive on trying to like get new books. I want to kind of read into what I have. And then next year when I do it, I'm going to try to like mix it up and go outside of my comfort zone a little bit. So anyway, this year I probably won't, for example, get to the graphic novel portion of this because the only graphic novel that comes to mind that I want to read that would fit this is Persepolis. I can't remember who the author of that is right now. It's like a graphic novel classic and it is Persian. It's set in Iran. Um, so it would qualify if I get my act together and get it from the library or whatever, I would do that because that is something that I've been wanting to read. But otherwise, I probably won't do the graphic novel. Update from the future. Um, I was looking up possibly getting Persepolis from the library and I noticed it was $8 on Amazon. So I was like, you know what, girl, let's do this. So I will in fact read that. And then again, unless I just like get through a lot of things and decide that I really want to read the shared book, which was A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, I probably won't read that either. So I'm going into this knowing that I am not going to hit two of the specific challenges. But again, I think I'm using this as an opportunity to like, remind myself of how many things I just natively really want to read that would fit the spirit of this readathon. And then next year, I'll kind of branch out and start challenging myself a little bit more. So I wanted to show you the books that I'm planning on reading and also give you some recommendations of ones that would qualify if you are looking to do this readathon as well, because I definitely have some recommendations of things that qualify that I would love to see people reading in the month of May. So what initially got me really excited about this and thinking through how many books I have on my TBR that qualify um, were three arcs that I have that are coming out in May, June, and August, but could have things for you to read in May for all three of them, if that makes sense. We'll get into it. So the first one being I have an arc of The Dragon Republic, which comes out in August, which is by R.F. Kuang, and it is the follow up to The Poppy War. Now, R.F. Kuang is an ethnically Chinese author, and the fantasy world in this trilogy is based on a retelling of Chinese history. Specifically, the first one is about uh, kind of a fantasy version of the rape of Nanking. Uh, this book I really loved. I'm very excited for the sequel, um, but this is something that you could definitely read during the challenge regardless. And then I'm gonna read the arc of the sequel that I have coming up. So that was the first arc that I had. The second one is I have an arc for the bride test, which comes out on May 7th. So by the time the readathon is happening, you should be able to get that. But it is a follow up to the kiss quotient, which was one of the big kind of like breakout titles in romance last year. So the bride test features a neurodiverse Vietnamese American hero. So it fits sort of the intersectional identity piece of this. And uh, I believe that the author herself is narrowly diverse and Vietnamese. So both the author and the character in The Bride Test would fit that criteria. But even if you don't read The Bride Test, The Kiss Quotient uh, is still by a Vietnamese author and it features a Vietnamese hero. So The Kiss Quotient, I think, was really thoughtful contemporary romance. I'm very excited to read The Bride Test. By the time we get to May, I think I probably will all have already read it. So it's not going on my TBR, but just one of the three that inspired me to think about this. And then the last of my arcs that I had that was inspiring me is that I have an arc of Wolf Rain, which will be the latest in the Psy Changeling series by Nalini Singh. Uh, hopefully by then I will have already read Ocean Light. I'm hoping to do that in April. But if I don't get to this in April, I will be reading both Ocean Light and Wolf Rain in the month of May. And these are the latest in her side Changeling series. So Nalini Singh, if you didn't guess by her name, is a an Indian author. She is actually an Indian Kiwi. She lives in New Zealand, but she is ethnically Indian. So any book by her would fit for this readathon because she, like I said, is Indian. And 
Nalini Singh writes fantastic urban fantasy. She also has, so this is the Side Changeling series, which is like my very fave. I absolutely love it. She does have some contemporary romances. She then also has a different urban fantasy series called the Archangel series. So Side Changeling is sort of like people with psychic powers plus like shifters as her urban fantasy magical creatures. And then the Archangel series has angels if you couldn't tell from the name of that. So she's got a few different series going. The latest uh, is what I'm going to be reading, but you could start all the way at the beginning of the series, which is called Slave to Sensation. And it's got quite a cover, let me tell you. Um, as the series went along, I think they finally realized like, oh, not just romance readers would probably like to read this. So they got less in my opinion, kind of crazy covers. But Nalini Singh is like a fantastic writer. She's got a thriller coming out in December and any of her books would qualify for our Asian readathon. So if you've been thinking about getting into Nalini Singh, maybe May is the month to do that. So while we're sort of in the like romance adjacent or romance themed uh, section of this TBR, so there's two other romances that I would like to read as a part of Asian readathon. The first being Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole, which is a novella in her Reluctant Royal series. I pick this because the hero in this, I believe, is Vietnamese. And yeah, I'm really like, I'm excited to get into that series anyway. And it's interracial romance. Yeah, it's supposed to be fantastic. I really like Alyssa Cole's historicals, and this is my first foray into her contemporaries. So that's on my TBR. And then the other romance one that I had on my TBR is The Suffragette Scandal by Courtney Milan. Now, part of why I wanted to put this on my TBR is that you may not know if you are a romance reader that Courtney Milan is a woman of color. She is half Chinese and half Caucasian. And Courtney Milan is arguably like, I would say in terms of just like pure writing, the best romance writer going right now. She is also like an incredible woman who she has given the world a lot. Let's just put it that way. You should definitely look up her contributions to certain um, American political scandals uh, in the judiciary in the last few years. She's been an important voice in that. I believe she's also the reason we have the dinosaur emoji. She's just an awesome woman all around and not enough people read her and I love her. And her first book in this quartet is The Duchess War, which was a huge part of my thesis in grad school. I absolutely love it. Anyway, this is the fourth book in that quartet of The Brother Sinister. It's my last one, my last like full book to read in that. So I decided to go ahead and give this a shot for Asian Readathon. And I also just wanted to shout out if you are a romance reader and you didn't know that Courtney Milan is a woman of color and that she is biracial, I just wanted to shout her out and let people know that she would qualify for this readathon. And then moving uh, into non sci fi fantasy, because most of the rest of my list is sci fi fantasy, but there are two other ones on my list that are not. The first one is All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung. This is a part of my Goodreads Friends Pick My TBR challenge that I've been doing. This was one that Bethany at Beautifully Bookish Bethany gave five stars to, and I need to read it, so I decided to read it in the month of May. It is a memoir by a Korean American author who uh, was born in Korea but was adopted into a Caucasian family in America. And it's really, I think, an exploration of her identity in a white family, in a white world, and like what it means to have uh, a different ethnic identity than most of the people around her. Bethany loved it, and we often have very similar tastes when it comes to things like memoirs, so I'm very excited for that. And uh, I will be getting that, I think, on audio from Scribd. So I've got that on the docket. And then the other non sci fi pick that I have for this readathon is a study in Scarlet Women by Sherry Thomas. This is a historical mystery that is a retelling of Sherlock Holmes, but with ladies like the Sherlock in this is a lady. And uh, again, Sherry Thomas is per somebody who I don't know if everybody realizes is a woman of color, but she is she was originally born in China and then immigrated to the US. So she also has intersectional identity in terms of being a first generation American. And yeah, I've enjoyed some of the historical romances she's written. So I'm excited to try like historical mystery from her, which is a little bit different. I want to say this might be YA, but I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, I've just heard nothing but good things about this book. So I'm excited to get to that. Okay, and then like I said, I have three sci fi fantasy picks. So the the first one is a fantasy pick and it is The Black Tides of Heaven by J.Y. Yang. And J.Y. Yang is a Singaporean gender non-conforming author and this fantasy world uh, has Asian gender non-conforming people in it, Asian inspired fantasy world. 
And yeah, this is a novella, which I am a sucker for novellas. I've got two of them on my TBR, um, this and Can't Escape Love. So I like that it's a novella, but also I've just heard, again, really great things about this. It's something I've been meaning to give a try and now is my opportunity. And then a sci-fi pick is The Three Body Problem by Chi Shen Lu translated by Ken Liu. Uh, and this is a sci-fi book that is like one, I think it's like one of the all time bestsellers in the history of humans because it was originally published in China and was like a massive hit there. I think Amazon bought the rights to this for like a billion dollars to adapt. I might be mistaken, but something bananas. And yeah, I've just heard like very mixed things to be totally honest, but intriguing things, things that make me want to see how I react to this. And also I wanted to pick this because this is originally written in Chinese and it is translated by Ken Liu. Um, so this fits the translated challenge. And yeah, there's just something I've been wanting to get to. And then last but not least, The Buried Giant by Kaza Ishiguru is a fantasy novel. And I think it's kind of, I would say it's probably more on like the literary end of fantasy. And Kaza Ishiguru, we're gonna talk more about here in a second when I get to follow-up recommendations, but I really love his writing. And this was a book on my 19 books I wanna read in 2019 list. So it's a great opportunity for me to check off that TBR item and just hopefully read a book that I'm really gonna love because like I said, I love Kaza Ishiguru. He is a Japanese British author and he's uh, therefore like first generation British because I think he was born in Japan and then his family immigrated. So. Uh, very excited to get to this. So those are the nine books on my TBR and just to run them down again, because I felt like that was a little all over the place. It was The Dragon Republic by RF Kuang, Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole, Wolf Rain by Nalini Singh, also Ocean Light, if I don't read Ocean Light in April, we'll see. The Suffragette Scandal by Courtney Milan, A Study in Scarlet Women by Sherry Thomas, All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung, The Three Body Problem by Shi Shen Liu, The Black Tides of Heaven by J.Y. Yang, and The Buried Giant by Kaza Ishiguru. So in there I have representation in author and in characters actually, both of China, Vietnam, India, uh, let's see here, Korea, Singapore, and Japan. So pretty good spread there. And then like I said, if inspiration strikes and I decide to go ahead and try to get Persopolis, that would also be Iran as another country in there. So that's what I'm doing for this readathon. And then I did want to give you guys a few suggestions if you are looking for other things for your TBR. Like I said, the doc that's in the description of the announcement video of this has a huge list of potential things you could put on your TBR, but these are a few that I wanted to call out. Some of them are on the list, some of them aren't, but things that I think if you've not read them, you might want to read for your readathon. Uh, so one that's definitely on there is Monstrous as a graphic novel. I have a whole review of this. I really enjoyed this uh, trilogy of graphic novels. It's a series that's ongoing, but I think it's on a little bit of a pause right now. But I would definitely recommend these if you're looking for a graphic novel pick that qualifies. And then uh, let's see, I am not reading this. I have not read it yet just because it's a honker of a book and I already have several very big books in that TBR. But The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. He, this is the same Ken Liu who translated The Three Body Problem. This is the first in a, I think it's a trilogy, but definitely a series of fantasy novels. And I think he also has a short story collection. So definitely give this a recommend if you are looking for more fantasy that would fit the readathon. And then finally, I just wanted to give some additional love to Kaza Ishiguru. I think the only book that I saw on the TBR list that they have listed is Never Let Me Go. I think that's because this is sort of like a literary sci-fi novel and it's the one that I most often see referenced on booktube. But I gotta tell you, he's written a lot of stuff, like that one that I'm gonna read. There's also, let's see, in the Drop Caps edition, there's an artist in a floating world and my second all-time favorite novel behind Jane Eyre is The Remains of the Day. This book is so good and I wish more people would read it. He won a, a Nobel Prize basically because of this book and the others too, but like this is his classic work. It's also one of the definitive novels of uh, British like country house novels and it was written by an immigrant. And so I think he brings like fresh eyes to that genre and it's told in like letter and diary form and it makes me weep. I love it so much. I would love to see the Asian readathon be a reason why people pick this book up because it is just so good. If you like historical literary type novels, 
and you've not read this, you like definitely need to fix that because it's so good. Anyway, I feel like I was a little all over the place in this video, so hopefully I edit this into something that makes sense. But I am really excited about this. I'm not totally sure why, to be totally honest. Like I just, this really sparked my imagination and got me really excited. I think because it made me think about my own TBR in a new way. And I always like it when something inspires me to do that. Anyway, I'm very excited to participate. I will definitely be keeping you guys posted on how I do. I may do like a little like readathon vlog and post that. We'll see. We'll see how I do with that. Uh, I am an inconsistent vlogger at best, but that's what I'm thinking for the Asian readathon. You should definitely join. If you are going to join, let me know in the comments a couple of the books that you're most excited to read. Definitely go check out Read with Cindy's channel. She's the tits. And yeah, I think that that will do it. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having a really lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.